Right on folks, John Crane here in the shop and it is a beautiful spring day here in the Pacific Northwest. And the video that I have in store for you today is all about wire nuts. Now in particular, these are the types and sizes of wire nuts that I like to use. And most importantly, I'm gonna show you how to use them to make a proper connection. Now, whether you're just getting started doing electrical work or you've been doing it a long time, I think you're really gonna like this video. All right, let's get started. All right, here is the selection of wire nuts that I'm gonna share with you today. And this is the wire nuts that I most commonly carry in my wire nut case. Now I'm gonna be going over these real small wire nuts to big wire nuts, specialty wire nuts, grounding. I got some Wagos in here, some push-in connectors some underground silicone connectors, you name it, we're gonna go over it today. And let me know if I've left any wire nuts out, maybe you got a favorite that you use all the time, please leave a comment in the comment section. Also like and subscribe, tell your friends. All right, but first I wanna start out showing you how I like to make up the wire connection with the linesman's pliers before you put the wire nut on. All right, by far the most common wire gauge to use is 12 AWG wire. Now that's American wire gauge, as you can see here on this Starrett scale. And this is some number 12 copper wire. You see how that fits in there? So I'm gonna show you how to make up a connection on some 12 gauge wire. So now I got a couple wires here. I got this vise just representing how these would be attached to an electrical box. It's nice to be able to tug on the wires a little bit as you're doing this. So what I wanna do first is take the wire and strip back about three quarters to one inch of insulation. So strip that off. I'll strip off this next one. And you want to get this insulation lined up nicely. Now you come in with the linesman's pliers and you want to give this a nice twist. All right, after that's got a nice twist, then you come in and snip this off flat. Now I'll come in with a yellow wire nut and I will twist that on until I get, that gets nice and tight and it starts to twist those wires. Now that is a very strong connection. Now I'm gonna do three wires. And when you put these three wires together, you wanna to put them together in a triangle. See like that? Not all flat, but as a triangle. Then come in with the linesman's pliers. And again, get a nice twist going. All right, now there's a lot of debate whether to twist or not to twist. And I am definitely in the camp with Chubby Checkers on this one. Come on, baby, let's do the twist, right? The twist is the way to go. This is a very strong connection. Okay, now I'm doing four wires. And again, you don't want these flat. You wanna put these all together, line up the insulation. Come in with chubby checkers here, do the twist. All right, after you get that nice and twisted, come in and snip the top flat. And now's a good time to come in and inspect the twist. Now, when you're inspecting your wires, you wanna make sure that you have a very nice twist going on all the wires. You don't want one wire in the center with the rest going around it. You want them all to be in that spiral twist. Again, we'll twist the wire nut on. Now, when I was in electrical trade school, my instructor, Joe Brightweiser, after we would make up our connections, he would come along and he would start tugging on all these wires and see if he could pull any of these out. Right, so that's a good test that you can do is to tug on these wires, make sure you have a very strong connection. Okay, here I'm trying to show you how to make up actually a bad connection and this is what not to do. And sometimes you have all the wires wrapping around one wire in the center. And if you can see, see this wire? I can move that in and out. So if you put a wire nut on and that one is not part of the twist, 
All right, you put the wire nut on and then you can pull that wire right out of the center. So that is what you wanna avoid. This is what you don't wanna do. Now, if you're having trouble getting these wires to stay in place as you twist them, you can put a wrap of tape on there that will keep all the insulation lined up. You can also strip these a little bit longer and sometimes that helps to get a twist on all these conductors. All right, there we go. We got two, three, four, and five wire connections with the wire nuts. Now, what happens when you have a loose connection? Well, if you have a loose connection, that generates heat. Now, think of arc welding. If you have an arc welding rod and you come against the steel and then you lift it off, you create an electrical arc that creates a lot of heat. Now, the same thing can happen with an electrical wire connection. So by doing this twist, we have a very nice mechanical bond by twisting this with our linesman's pliers even before we put the wire nut on. And if you look at the twist, we have a tremendous amount of surface area from the different wires touching each other. This is creating a very nice bond between the wires. Now, if you don't have that, right, you can get arcing, you can get heat, you can get sparks that can lead to a fire. So this is a very important step that you want this to be very secure. Be very meticulous when you're making up your wire connections, right? You don't want a fire. Okay, say I'm making up a connection in a high vibration area, something with a motor such as a dishwasher, maybe it's a table saw, a piece of machinery. If that's the case, it's nice to have a little added security. And so what I'll do is I'll make up the wire connection with the twist and the wire nut and then come in with some electrical tape. Give this a nice wrap around. And then even come in with a cable tie and cinch this down just like that, snip it off. And just like that, you got a very secure connection in a high vibration area. Here I am making up a strand and a solid together. So a lot of times I like to twist the strand around, but I wanna leave a little bit of the solid and the strand both so that coil inside the wire nut if you can see inside the wire nut, there's a little coil spring. That's what's making the connection. So you want that to grab onto the solid copper and onto the strand it. So you put that on, keep twisting until that spring bites into both wires. Now. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make up the Cadillac or the Rolls Royce of wire connections. And I'm gonna show this using this strand it wire. Now, if this already has a heavy twist to it, I like to untwist the strands a little bit so the wires are kind of free there. And here comes the Rolls-Royce Anti-Ox. This is the Noalox compound. And I like to put just a little dab of this on the wires. You don't need much. All right, you put a little bit of this on and then you take a brush you brush this into the wire, All right? You mesh those wires together, come in with your linesman's pliers, mesh those strands together. Now, sometimes this, if this is a damp location, I'll even take some of this and I'll dab some of this into the bottom of my connector. Right, this makes a really nice connection. Then I'll take my tape. This is the Super 33 Scotch tape. Right, get that wrapped with the tape. Then come in with our cable tie, cinch that up and snip that off. All right, let's look at the different sizes and types of wire nuts. If you haven't noticed, I like the brand Ideal. I like the wire nuts that they make, and I've been using those for over 30 years since I started in the electrical trades. All right, let's look at this one. This is a tiny gray wire nut, 
And this is a minimum of two number 22 wires and a maximum of two number 16 wires. This is mostly used in low voltage and communication wires. All right, same thing with this tiny blue one right here. This is a minimum of two number 22 wires and a maximum of three number 16 wires. As we move up to these orange wire nuts, you'll often see these in included with lamps and fixtures that you buy. Sometimes these are included with uh, light fixtures. And these will take two number 14 wires. But if we look at their chart there, this will take a minimum of one number 18 with one number 20 and a max of two number 14 wires. All right, here's some of the most common wire nuts that we got here is the yellow wire nut. Now this takes a minimum of two number 18s and a maximum of four number 14s with a number 18, right? They always throw in some weird combination of wires on these charts that you're probably never gonna use, right? You're not gonna use four 14s with one number 18. It's just strange. But as you get to use these wire nuts, you'll kind of figure out your own system of what is the most secure, what's biting into the wire. You'll find out quickly how many wires you can put under one of these and still feel safe at the same time. This yellow wire nut also conveniently fits very nicely in some half inch EMT and can be used as a blow gun. Watch out, those things come out with some velocity. All right, next up, we're gonna look at the red wire nut, one of the probably the most common wire nuts used in the trade. Lots of guys fill their bags with the red wire nut. A minimum of number 214 wires, a maximum of four number 12s you can put under this. Definitely a go-to wire nut. Now these tan wire nuts, I don't use these as much, but some guys, this is their go-to wire nut. This has a wide range. Minimum two number 20 wires, max of three number 10s. And sometimes it's all about choosing a wire nut that, uh, you know, covers a wide array of wires. All right, next up is big blue. We had the little blue, now we got big blue. Minimum of three number 12 wires you can put under this and a maximum of one number six with two number eights. That's another one of those uh, funny numbers that you give you. So let's just say you can put some number eight wire under this. Now this, you're looking at your uh, hot tub wire, you're looking at your range, maybe your hot water heater, maybe some electrical heaters. This is a good wire nut. That is probably the biggest wire nut that you can get. All right, up next is the Twister ProFlex line. Now this is the orange and blue, a minimum of two number 22 wires, a maximum of four number 12 solid wires. These are fairly new in the trade. And I think all that's going on here is it just covers a wider array of wires that you can put under it. Here is the yellow in the red. Now this is the Twister ProFlex. Minimum of two number 18s, maximum of four number 10s. And I think the ProFlex just means that it can cover a wide array of wires. I think this also has a 1000 volt rating on it, which is higher than the other wire nuts. All right, next up, let's jump over to this green wire nut for grounding. All right, I'll just show you quickly if I'm making up these grounds in a box, I tuck all the grounds to one corner. I leave one of them long, all right? Snip this off right about here, and then take all three of these. Now come in with the green wire nut. You see it has a hole in the end. You slide that over your ground wire. Twist that on, preferably this wire, if it's a two gang box, is long enough to make it to both devices or whatever you have in there. Now, another way to do this is by using a ground crimp. Now, this is great if you have pliers, linesman's pliers like this, or you can get a crimping tool. You insert this into the crimp, and then you slide this right over your ground wire. Crimp that nice and tight, 
and that doesn't take up a lot of room in your box. All right, next up is a wet location, damp location, wire nut. Now this wire nut is filled with silicone. Perhaps you're in a marine environment, a wet location, doing landscape lighting, irrigation, that type of thing. These wire nuts are very important for that, for keeping out corrosion. All right, another wire nut right here, this purple one, this is for houses that were wired back in the 60s and 70s that had aluminum conductors. And sometimes you want to combine aluminum with copper. And this is a way to do it. This also has a silicone uh, antioxidant type of thing inside of here. So when you twist this over the conductors, it covers them with that silicone and keeps out any kind of oxidation. That's what happens when you have dissimilar metals, they corrode each other and uh, it's usually affected by the air. So this keeps out any kind of air and keeps the corrosion to a minimum. Okay, before we jump over to the Wagos and the push-in connectors, I wanna show you this one over here. Now this is for direct burial. It comes with a wire nut like this. And this, you can see the packaging. This is made by Drycon. This is direct burial, strain relief, waterproof connections. A lot of times I've used this for landscape lighting, for irrigation, right? You're running this type of wire, you're burying it just below the surface, 12 inches, 18 inches, that type of thing. And you need to make up some connections for the lighting. And you can see this tube here is filled with silicone. So you put on your wire nut nice and securely, and then you push this down into the silicone until it goes all the way to the bottom. And you can see the silicone now is just covering that connection completely. And that is keeping out any water and rain. You wanna push it all the way to the tip, and then you can spread your wires like this, and it has a little snap connection. Sometimes I will wrap this with tape and then you just bury this right in the ground and that keeps any kind of water out of your connection. All right, let's jump over and we'll take a look at these push-in connectors. These are made by Ideal. Now this is two port. Here is a three wire one and there is also a four wire one. These are extremely convenient. All you do is strip a half inch of insulation off of the wire. You push this in, you can see that this is translucent and you can see the copper wire inside. You wanna make sure that the, you push the wire all the way to the tip to ensure a nice solid connection. Right now, I've seen a lot of these tested on different videos on YouTube, uh, people running high amps through them, trying to heat these up. There's also a lot of clickbait. People are showing this in the main picture that it's all melted and then you watch the video and they've melted it with a torch or a heat gun or that type of thing. These have been tested so much and they really do hold up. They're not overheating. They're not just falling off, you know. They're very, very strong. All right, let's take a look at the Wago. Now, this is a very popular connector. These are made in Germany. These are used extensively in Europe. They're starting to catch uh, a lot of steam here in the United States. And this is a great little connector. This is a lever connector. And you can see if you open up this lever, right, you can pull the wire out. This is great for temporary things, perhaps, a ballast, that type of thing, lighting where you're often changing something out. Perhaps you wanna make up a fixture before you go up a tall ladder. You put this on the end of your wire and then you just go up there and you quickly connect this to your uh, wires up there. This is also great. You can see here, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus, that I have stranded wire, I have solid wire. So this is a great connection between stranded and solid. These can also take a tremendous amount of heat. And it's just so nice that you're able to lift up this lever, release the wires, and these will take a wide range of wires. So this takes 24 through number 12 AWG wire. I should also say the strip gauge is right here. This is 11 millimeter which works out to be about 7 16ths of an inch that you want to strip 
off of the wire before you insert it you can see i've stripped that stranded wire right there you just stick it right in push it down look through the translucent plastic make sure it's all the way to the end and again very strong you'd be hard pressed to pull that out of that connector also wanted to say real quick that these have a hole on the end so you can stick your probe of your electrical meter in there you can get a continuity test you can get a voltage test right there they have a hole there they also have a hole on this side these ideal ones have one as well you can just slide your tester right down that little slot and check voltage so very convenient all right right on folks i think that was a pretty comprehensive overview on wire nuts what do you think Right, maybe I left out your favorite wire nut or connector. If so, please leave the name of it in the comments and I will check it out. And if you know anyone who's wiring a house, wants to you know, check out this video, you wanna share it with somebody, please send them the link. Tell them about my channel. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget, half inch EMT, yellow ideal wire nut. Just put that right in there. It makes an awesome blowgun. All right, don't shoot anyone. All right, right on. I hope you guys are doing great, and I'll see you all soon.